pulled it off by myself. I need no stinking help. So I'm preparing for my fall routine by doing the aerating and I'm gonna do some sand and maybe an overseed, maybe not. So the key with the aerator, you gotta kind of have your soil wet and it's gotta, the soil's gotta be wet down deep so it'll pull out a core. If it's, if it's dry, it just bounces. So that's why I've got the water going over there. I've marked out all my sprinkler heads and I'm ready to go, so. So this machine's just a DR homeowner model. It's got three times wide, it's fairly narrow, but it's, uh, it's what I have available to me. preparation for this aeration and the overseed with the sand today is Saturday and on Thursday I lowered my mower to 0.55 of an inch so a little over a half inch and so I wanted it really low so I could pull these cores out and use this snow shovel to push the cores into piles and so I can collect them so having the nice short lawn I'm hoping is gonna help me with this snow shovel to be able to push the cores into piles if it's long, it's almost impossible to do that. It makes it really difficult to collect the cores. And so I will likely collect these cores and then I wanna go over um, the lawn in this direction with the aerator. So I'm gonna try my luck with the shovel here. Okay, so here's an example of a core that I pulled up with a machine. The core is about two inches long. And if you can see here, I've got this uh, clay layer. This is my native soil. Then I've got this sand layer. So the sand layer is about maybe an inch and three eighths. And then this clay layer is about, oh, about three quarters of an inch. So look at that, he's pushing. <laughs> okay, so there's one of those four wheel bikes. Um, I think they make those things in Sweden or something like that in Europe. And they bring them over here. So I live in a resort community and they rent those down at an outfit down there. And so people come and think those things are just gonna be so fun because they look fun. Like, yeah, let's do that. So then they come down and it's downhill right here, all the way pretty much from where they come from, it's downhill. And then they, as they're coming back, you often see the guy out there pushing. And I tell you, they're just, it's a one-time deal. You ride them once and then you realize, oh man, these things are really slow and, and hard. So they kind of stop. So these guys are coming by all day long because there's a bike path that runs right past my house that goes through town here. So anyways, I finished raking up all of these plugs here. Got them all in piles and I've hauled off uh, two of these wagon loads full. I'm being reminded of how much work this is to do this core aeration. The part that's all the work is the breaking or the shoveling up of the cores. It's just a ridiculous amount of work. So if you look at this, you can see lots of holes kind of everywhere. So that is exactly what I want. I want lots of holes everywhere so the water can get down, so the nutrients can get down, and then I'm gonna fill it up with sand and do the top dressing. So the question is, why do the core aeration like this? Why pull plugs? So because this lawn is so thick and dense because it's cut short, it gets so thick and dense that the water has a hard time getting down to the roots. Because it's so thick, it will actually run off rather than soak down. And so the core aeration uh, makes little pockets for the water to come down and then the roots can kind of grow down and grow longer as well. So while this is a crazy amount of work, I do enjoy it and I like to be out here doing this. My wife thinks I'm crazy that I was kind of thinking about it all last night and then waking up this morning kind of excited to go out and get the aerator, do the cores and do the, the raking or the shoveling of these cores. But I tell you, I, 
starting to double think or second guess myself when it comes to that aerator. It is hard work. Okay, so a lot of people say, hey, how'd you make your lawn look that nice? And what do you do to make it look that nice? I just tell them I'm out here all the time. I put a lot of effort into it. And so, you know, if you want something nice, you gotta be willing to put the time in and the effort to make it nice. So, I guess that's the thought of the day. So I know the question's gonna come, and you're all gonna say, or some people are gonna say, hey, what do you do with those cores? What, what do you do with the cores? Do you compost them, or what do you do? So this is what I do with them. I put them out in this grub pile. It's a pile of sod, grass clippings, um, dirt, clay soil that I pulled out of my flower beds. Bunch of junk in here. I'm putting the plugs here. So eventually I'll get a skid steer in my dump trailer. I'll put all this in there, make two or three loads, and take it to the landfill. That is what I do with the cores. I dump them right there and they'll sit there for a little while and break down and they're clay and they're sand. Yeah, I could probably recycle them and put them back on the lawn, but for me, that's just too much work. I'd rather just haul them away get some sand and put it down. So I just finished the aeration, okay? I've already done that side, did that this morning, and then I just did this whole section over here. That is a lot of work. That machine goes super slow, and but I finally got it done. But anyways, that's it. You can see all of these plugs. This took like maybe two or three hours to plug this, just this section, because the machine is so slow but it's worth it and it's gonna look great when after I put the sand on. So the steps are core aerate and then gather the plugs and then put the sand down and then drag it in. So the sand will come about next week, but I wanna show you my drag and it's time to start thinking about the fall. I start thinking about what we're doing in the fall and about overseeding, uh, top dressing, Top dressing is the best to do when the grass is growing the most vigorously, and that's in the fall or the spring. So, so I wanna thank you guys for supporting me. Um, I do have a few more of these shirts, these Lawn Rebel shirts and then the Domination shirts. The Lawn Rebel shirts are about gone. The larges are gone, but I've got a few XLs left. No, I've got a few double XLs and I think one XL and then a bunch of mediums. And then I've got a bunch of the Domination shirts. I need to sell those and then I'm gonna make some more shirts of this style and then the one with the mustache. So. So it's the next day and I've raked up all the cores that were on this whole section over here. I've got all these piles here, one, two, three, four, five, six, probably about 10 or 12 piles of these cores. And so the reason I'm collecting these cores is because I want to change the soil profile. So a lot of people will say, well, why are you collecting the cores? Just leave them on the lawn. So I understand leaving the cores on the lawn and letting them kind of disintegrate and just kind of go back down into the soil. But for me, trying to cut real low. So really, how can I mow this lawn with all these cores everywhere, okay? There's probably a hole about every three inches or so, maybe a little bit less, but probably every three inches in every direction there's a hole. So there's hundreds of thousands of cores on the lawn and I'm trying to mow. So how do you expect me to mow with all these cores on the lawn? when I'm trying to mow this tall. They're not gonna break down that fast, so they've gotta go. The next step is I'm gonna mow this, not today. I'm gonna water it now that the holes are all in here, and then I'm likely gonna mow it tomorrow, and then maybe the next day, and then possibly the next day, and then I'm gonna put the sand down. So I wanna mow it three or four times, and I might put fertilizer down in between there so I can have some a fertilizer layer and then the sand layer, so. I want to jumpstart the grass and do a quick release fertilizer so it can start growing vigorously and quickly because the sand is going to suffocate the lawn. So, anyways, thanks for watching my videos, guys. Appreciate it. If you like what I do, subscribe to my channel below, comment on my channel, and like my channel. So, appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.